Douglas Kalyev support Hewell. The Kerry team on the left of the screen was led by Mick O'Connell, Jerem O'Shea, Dwyer, McAuliffe and Sean Murphy, while Sean Purcell, Frank Evers and Michael McDonough were in front for Galway. Then, the national anthem. GAA president Dr. Stewart starts the big game. The ball is broken down to Sean Purcell, who puts punch into Galway's first attack. But the strength of the Kerry backs was immediately obvious, and this was only the first of many offensives which foundered on the half-back line. Brilliant right half-back Sean Murphy kicks to full forward John Dowling, who gets the first score of the game, Curry one point, Galway nil. And one minute later from a Tom Long pass, Dowling had increased the Monster men's lead, Curry two points, Galway nil. These intense spectators may have thought they could discern the writing on the wall, but it was early yet, and from a Sean Purcell pass, Frank Evers rushed through for a great goal to put Galway in the lead by one point, now the West awakens. Dan McAuliffe takes a free, but the result was only a wide. John Dowling catches the ball. He passes to Paddy Sheik. Then Tom Long tries to field it, but again the ball goes wide. At the other end, Sean Purcell points a 21-yard free to stretch the Galway lead to two points. Right full forward Dave Deeney moves in for Curry. Greeley tackles him, but Dan McAuliffe comes over from the left to give a hand. He shoots, Jimmy Farrell saves it, but John Dowling seems to take it right out of his hands, and John Dowling is fouled. So Dan McAuliffe points his second free to leave only one point between the teams. Curry continued to press, but Dave Geeney shot another Curry wide, one of ten Curry wides in the first half. The much pointed Curry midfield of Michael O'Connell and Seamus Murphy had to give way in the early stages to Galway's Frank Evers and Matty McDonough. But if Curry had been weak at midfield, they boasted an almost impenetrable halfback line of Sean Murphy, Kevin Coffey, and Michael Dwyer. When Ty Glein scored a point from a free, the teams were level, and so they went off at half time. Jim Young got possession at the breakaway after the start of the second half, but Paddy Sheehy was taken down by Kassan a minute later, and Ty Glein put Kerry into a lead, which they never subsequently lost. Michael Dwyer takes a curry free in the shadow of the new Hogan stand. It goes to Michael O'Connor. O'Connell passes to Ty Glein. Jimmy Farrell punches it out. Then fullback Meade helps to clear. But again under the dropping ball is Paddy Sheehy, number 12. He shoots but it just skirts the post. Galway's Sean Purcell passes to Frank Stockwell. Stockwell into Garrett. Now just watch this narrow escape for Curry. Coming from the left is Matty McDonough. Up to Joe Young. But Young shoots wide and very much to the disgust of this follower, who seems to think he could have done much better himself. Here's Joe Young again, and this time he fists a Galway point. But Curry were not now to be stopped, and Mick O'Dwyer added this neat point immediately after Don McAuliffe's first goal. And here comes McAuliffe's second goal. John Dowling gathers about 50 yards out, sends it high into the goal mouth. Jimmy Farrell catches it, but here comes McCullough from the right, and Kerry are well on their way to their 19th All-Ireland title. But Galway continued to fight. Frank Stockwell rounds Niall Sheik. But Stockwell is eventually stopped near the goal line. 
Then Sean Purcell, desperately seeking a goal, gambled at the ball being returned to him like this. But he shot too high and only scored a point. The midfield battle was, if anything, still going in Galway's favour. But there was always that tireless wonder man, Sean Murphy, to contend with in the Kerry half-back line. And time after time, Sean's long kicks sent Kerry's forwards massing into the Galway goal. Colin pulls at Paddy Sheehy's jersey. But Sheehy gets it to John Dowling. John is regarded as equally dangerous and a free resource. This time, Tiger Lyon, who was married on the previous day, hits the post. Out to the far wing, but back it comes again. Mead clears for goal. Up to centre field, where Laid, number 13, moves it up. Out to Sean Purcell. Purcell rounds Dwyer, but again, this attack was of no avail. Frank Evers to lay, but yet another Western effort finishes outside the post. These last few scenes show that at least some of the spectators considered the game won and lost at this stage, but there was no slackening of pace until the final whistle. <laughs> And true to form, the player in the gap to repulse Galway's last attack was man of the match, Sean Murphy. As Murphy's kick reached Tom Long, referee John Dowling, no relation to the Kerry full forward, of course, sounded the final whistle, which ended the match and which assuredly also was only the starting signal for the jubilant celebrations which the confident Curdy men had arranged before they even came to town. <laughs>